back again, back again, back again, back again. It's episode 20. I just feel like 20 episodes is just like, if you look at like the spreadsheet of like all the people that we had thus far and all the people that like we're gonna have coming on, it's just like, I just feel like we're just entering like a new, a new era, right? Like a DC voice is getting a new revamp, websites getting a new revamp, kicking on cards getting a new revamp, um, new articles are coming in, theme articles are coming in. We're going, we're doing the uh, the panel talks, you know, every every few weeks or so, every four weeks or so, every once a month. Um, so a lot of stuff happening on this side, man. It's a lot of things. So I, I'm just happy that I'm, I was able to, I'm able to consistently put out something like this, right? What I like about it is that it, it brings people that I, I've never met before closer to me, me closer to them. You know what I'm saying? And it, it brings a connection in where I'm, they may know somebody else that can be interviewed on on the show. You know what I'm saying? Like or people that I also can connect with, or events I can go to, and things of that nature. Like it's a whole bunch of different um, different things we can do from this platform like i feel like this is not the end this is actually the very beginning of what could be something great <laughs> if it's not great already right so i guess i always like doing this because i told into the future and as we grow and as we get more and more personalities on here i'm trying to think as well like when would be a good time to do some follow-up interviews as well you know like we've had a lot of great interviews like um shame abk just dropped some new songs definitely would love to talk to him about his journey what's going on over there once again remember we interviewed um Muggs mcfly who's also dropping new um new apparel just had another event as well um tabby turnier who's having the bossy brunch coming up in a, in a few weeks may 22nd right like these are all individuals that i've interviewed i'm like hmm, maybe i should kind of get on the show again so maybe you know i'm looking for that i'm looking for a time where we can really like sit down and say hey i can kind of introduce you to come back on the show and see how far you're doing and see what else you're doing um so i think that's important i think it's important to not just have these one-on um, interviews but to actually have something that people can go then go back and document right and say oh we talked about this around this time and this drop and then we and then we did this and then this drop and then this, so on and so forth and i'm able to help them document you know these important times in their journey right because very often times in our journey we very we, we miss a lot of the, the small things right we don't really have a chance to explain what's going on we need to sort of see the product so opportunity to come on a platform and really speak candidly about your process your creative journey um your entrepreneurial journey or just even your your journey with yourself right like these are all things that i feel like are important are growing right happen they happen at different points in time they don't just happen on that one time that you know you had an interview with Kegan Makachi and your life was just magical after that right there's so many other points i would love to highlight in these individuals so maybe um after a couple episodes we're looking at some repeat offenders right some people that want to come back on the show really able to talk and kick it with me and really make it a whole space but not talking about the future too much you know i love i love i love like this interview particularly today because of the fact that next week is mother's day and this is an individual where you know as we're, as we're going into 2022 and beyond, I feel like we're looking at new ways to do things, new ways to, you know, cultivate energy, new ways of cultivating food, and a new way that we're also dealing with, you know, especially um, myself being in the education space, is new ways to cultivate children, right? New ways to cultivate um, parenting, education, upbringing, right? Different ways we can go about um, far from traditional norms in raising our children. I feel like this is another um, does that very well so hopefully I'm you know going to do with justice <laughs> going to do with justice as I hope I always do and then we have our wonderful guest wave to her
Can we get her in here? Can we get her in here? Let's see. Accepts. Yes, sir. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello, hello. Nice. How are you? Very good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. How's your Sunday going? Pretty good. We went to uh, my son's soccer practice this morning at like 11. That was you good. You soccer already? Yeah. So um, that's the earliest sport we could get him into. Right. So they start soccer at two years old. So we were just like, Jeez. let's get on it. Let's get him some discipline early and see how that goes for him. Does he enjoy it? He loves it. Like at first he was really shy about it, but um as the weeks go on he's like getting more comfortable he's listening better it's a major change from the first week right, right. this is Caden, right this is cairo cairo's the old Cairo, really yeah oh wow Jeez. <laughs> so how's it feel sort of to like before we even get into the interview how's it feel to watch your watch your baby sort of you know get pushed over or you know something like that or like you know tackled oh what do we got did we lose her did we lose her I hope we didn't lose her. Let's see what's going on. Did we lose her? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see if we ain't back at it. Boom. Except. Are we back on? What happened? I'm sorry. We're back here? <laughs> yes. Okay, your picture is not catching up. Let's see if this is gonna if it's gonna work itself out. Oh man, I'm sorry. Give me a second. Looking back. Let's see. Let's see. Let me see. I don't want to leave and end the live. Let me see. Hmm. Let me see. All right, I'm going to try to remove you, and you're going to come back on. Let's see. All right, cool. Now, let's see if we can get her back on. Da -da 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 Let me also open my window. If you know me, you know I get hot when I'm nervous. Let's see if we can get her back on here. Let's see if we can get our guests back on here. We have a great conversation. You know, honestly, I think it's these 5G towers. These 5G towers are claiming to give us better connectivity, but they're not. They're not because every time I get on the live, you know, something always is bound to happen. Before, when Instagram first had the live situation going on, I wasn't always, you know, ending my lives like this. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't always happening like this. Fix my tripod while we're waiting for her, right? And as a person, right, that's very good at awkward sciences because I'm an awkward individual, the best thing you do is play some music. And I know y'all know my whole my whole conflict with Instagram because they never let me play my music. They never let me play my music. You know, they never like me playing my music because of the facts of copyright or something like that, you know, but I feel as if, and I always say, I'm always say this, if the music is on YouTube, why can't I play it? Why can't I put my, my, my music in where I want to put my music, you know? So that's just something I want Instagram to think about, right? Maybe I should get uh, the CEO of Instagram on Kiki no Wakashi, and he tells me why I can't have the music I want on my Instagram live, because it's outrageous. Yeah, we got our lovely esteemed guest back. Let's get her in here. What's up? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Ooh. Is this better? <laughs> yeah. Good. Sorry. I'm on a new phone. Uh, funny story. My son placed my personal phone underneath our water faucet in the bathroom. Um, yeah, so I'm on my work phone right now. 
Well, at least you know his curiosity bug is, is working because Absolutely. now he knows that phones don't work underwater. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, that's all good. That's all good. You know, I'm always, I'm a master at awkward silences because I tell people I'm very awkward as a person. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> so, but I was going to ask you before we even got into the interview, like, how is it now, like, being kind of letting your son out and getting tackled and getting pushed over and things like that? Like, how does that make you feel? So, we don't deal with a lot of that at soccer. Most of that comes from the playground. Oh, uh, yeah. To be very honest with you, it drives me freaking nuts. <laughs> like, it, it's really hard to, like, know how you raise your child and, like, know that you, you've you raised them to say please and thank you. And right, right, right. And want to go down the slide before you go down. And then you see another kid from another family who will just literally – Push your push, kid. Yeah, push your kid, yeah. And it just drives me nuts. And it's really hard for me to stay calm sometimes, but, like, you have to. <laughs> so it's definitely hard, but I'm, I'm working through it. No, yeah, you know what's crazy? As a new mother, you never hear a mother say, like, you know, I love my kids so much, but I also equally have the same anger of punting another two-year-old across the playground. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it drives me nuts. <laughs> so... As everyone's coming into the live, I'd like to thank everyone to join the live right now and everyone that's going to be watching the live when it's posted later to another episode of Kicking It With Kachi, powered by the DC Voice, where every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Time, we highlight a person, entrepreneur, visionary, just dope individual of color that's really taking the industry by storm. And industry I'm using in a very broad sense because people don't like to say that parenting and motherhood and mothering is a career. But as we're going to go into the interview, right, we have a wonderful person by the name of Aniva Kelly J. And we're going to go into that name as well later, you know, hey, kicking it with us and dropping some amazing, amazing gems. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course. So right off the bat, right, let's get into the boring the nine to five action, right? Let me not let me not get into the fun stuff yet. But the nine to five yeah. also was interesting because you're in a very competitive, very like, um, what's the word? Time, time sensitive industry as well, right? With, with real estate. So, what are some things that people are sort of unaware or not knowledgeable about with with what you do? For sure. So. Um... In the real estate aspect, I'm not an agent at all. So, like, I'm not doing any of, like, the selling or anything. I'm more of a, in a supporting role. I work as an administrative assistant um, at a real estate company. It's one of the biggest real estate co commercial real estate companies in New York, um, which is amazing to have the opportunity to do. Right. Um, I work as an administrative assistant um, at a real estate company. Um, prior to that, I worked in another one of... New York's biggest real estate company is more on the residential side um, as a concierge and like their administrative assistant. So a misconception about that is that it's easy to get into or like anyone can do it. It's exactly. Difficult. <laughs> um, you have to be a certain type of person to be able to roll with the punches, whether that be as an agent or in a supporting role like I am as an administrative assistant um, with being a real estate agent from what I've seen is just, um, you know, you, you never know what the day can bring you. You never know what deal will close. You'll never know, uh, how a client will perceive what you've shown them or, um, things of that nature or on my side of things, you never know what, you know, uh, what another coworker may need, you, may need your help on, or you'll never know what, um, like executive assistant you'll have to cover that, their executive will ask you, like, book a flight to me to Taiwan today. Jeez, right. It's just, like, you have to be a certain type of person to be able to roll with those types of punches, for sure. So, and also, like, maintaining the job, right? And something that's so free-flowing and kind of chaotic in certain aspects, as you like to say. Like, now you have motherhood, where a lot of people believe it's, like, you're kind of firmly placed down in one place and you're stuck to being in the house all day, but you transformed it into your own sort of social brand that kind of informs. Because me as a person, honestly, as a guy, I'm learning a lot from your page, to be honest. But when I'm preparing for when I'm having my own little juniors, right? 
<laughs> and also like relates to like new and expected members. So like what sort of influenced the decision to say, I'm gonna be really not only I'm a documenter, but in watching your YouTube very candid about like how you're speaking about your experiences, you know, through pregnancy, postpartum depression, things of that nature, and even going back to work. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, uh, well, for what inspired me, I would say two things. One is a person, one is another influencer. Her name is uh, Alex Alexis Christiana. She's mm -hmm. influencer um, from, well, she's not from New York. I believe she's from Texas, um, but she lives in Brooklyn now. She's an amazing mom and like, she's very aspirational and like, she's definitely an influencer that I aspire to um, be like someday in terms of her consistency on Instagram and posting and, uh, her parenting style and her recommendations for things. I love it all. So she right. was influence for me. She also started on YouTube and transitioned to Instagram. Um, but also just for myself, um, I really just love capturing moments candidly. Um, I love to look back and like see where I was at a certain point in time. So a lot of what I've documented on YouTube was me just like, okay, I want to see this and like later on, like I want right. to see in ten years and like see myself and see how I um how I felt in the moment and I did that and I'm so happy that I did because I get to look back now and um that just really inspired me to transition over to Instagram as well and show that. And then a lot of my friends just like want to see what like what I'm doing with the boys or yeah, exactly yeah or they want to know my recommendations and it's easier to just like place it out on the platform and then if they need it they come get it mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and it's interesting too because you, you kind of build a community as well of like new mothers and new age ways of you know, raising your children, right? And looking at all these, like you said, new and inspiring ways of saying, hey, this could work for me as well, or this worked for me and, you know, helping someone else along their journey, right? And past two years, you've two, two pregnancies, new apartment, new job, right? And, right, you, uh, on the surface, right, as we all know, when it comes to this social media thing, you have the impression of a super mom, right? <laughs> but, I feel like those who do the work know there's a lot more grittiness, a lot more long nights, a lot more baggy eyelids than yeah. than <laughs> than Instagram likes to show, right? So yeah. how did you sort of prepare yourself, right, in being, you know, a young person aspiring in her career and then realizing that she's pregnant on once but twice and then saying, running with it, right? And just saying, I'm also made this an aspect of my career as well. Yeah, for sure. So, you know... Of course, Instagram in itself is a highlight reel. You see right. what I want you to see. You see, like, most of my highs and a really small amount of my lows. <laughs> so, like, uh, a, a big thing for me is, like, maximum effort. Like, what can happen if I, if I put my all into this? Right. So I just try my best to live by that every day. Every day is not like that for me, though. Some days I'm like, oh, no, I can't do this today. <laughs> uh, no, I can't get to the dishes right now. Like, I'm so exhausted. No, I can't do laundry tonight. It has to be tomorrow because I just, like, mentally cannot. Right. Um, so, you know, I, being on Instagram, I really enjoy uh, – just showing my life and uh, showing the candid moments of it all and the community of it all. So, you know, <laughs> it's really just maximum effort for me. What I can do, I can do. What I can't, I can't. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I feel like for young people, oh, you know, I just say young, but I feel like a lot of people our age are having a lot more babies than I realize. I'm like, oh, wait, I'm getting kind of up there in my age a little bit. It's but true. Then, it's not that I feel like as I'm getting older that people feel like they're too young to have kids. It's that they're scared that they're not ready enough and they're going to fail, right? So what sort of resources did you have or what sorts did you seek to sort of educate yourself on being a new mom and, you know, going through all these things that are n just foreign to you, essentially, and trying to get it down pat? Definitely. Well, I think a big... Uh 
a determining factor of me figuring things out was my own mom. So my mom had me, uh, so I had, I was pregnant with Cairo when I was 21. And I think my mom was pregnant with me when she was 20. Mm-hmm. So, so I got to watch a lot of my mom's journey and right. I feel like that definitely inspired a lot of my own motherhood, the good and the bad <laughs> in terms of learning from her. Um, the way that I, you know, just really want to always bring Cairo out and expose him to so much definitely comes from my mom. Like, she took my sister and I to everything. We saw so many different things. We were able to talk about so much because she she gave us those experiences. And I, that's something that, like, I really instill in my own motherhood now. Um, but in terms of being ready, <laughs> you know, both my kids were happy accidents. <laughs> so um, you're never really ready. Even if you plan for it all, if you know you have the house and you have the car and you, right. you have savings, once your baby is here, everything goes out the window because <laughs> they, it's their show. And right. you know, you're just like, you're just taking a, a backseat to that all. So um, in terms of being ready, the, the, I feel like there's really no ready. Um, you just have to be as ready as you possibly can be. So when I was pregnant, um, my partner and I started looking for apartments. We moved into our apartment when uh, two months before Cairo was born. Right. <laughs> um, it was just all just like getting ready. Like, okay, then we have an apartment. Uh, we'll have to get the couch next month. Exactly. Um, we have that. Okay, now we have two boys. Or I'm pregnant again for the second. <laughs> Our car is too small. We have to go get a new car. Okay, Katie. Yeah, get the soccer mom car. Yeah, Come on. a bigger car now. So now we have a bigger car. It's just all about getting ready and just keeping that momentum of just like right. you don't know when things can change so roll with the punches and change things when they need to be <laughs> and you know honestly you probably don't even remember but you did document when you guys first moved in i remember you was on the, the air mattress yeah back aching from moving all damn day and I, like you said it's interesting like you know you probably even in that moment was just like i'm over this it's overwhelming and then two years later, you know, still standing. So yeah. that's just a testament to say, if you're never really ready until you're ready to get ready, essentially. And in getting ready, right, like talking about your YouTube, as I was you know what I'm saying? If, if you haven't noticed, I'm kind of a stalker, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of all up in your business a little bit, right? Great research. <laughs> <laughs> so in your first YouTube video, right, in your Get to Know Me, yeah. right, you said because you were five six five seven, you couldn't be a model, mm-hmm. right? Fast forward to today, we're signed to a modeling agency, yeah, right, for expecting and nursing mothers, right? How do, can you discuss how how did that come to be, and especially how did you put yourself out there to make a name for yourself in that fashion? Definitely. So yeah, I've always loved the modeling space. Like I've always wanted to be a model when I was younger younger like I modeled for Essence and I was like five um so that was really cool but as I got older you know I never I never gave myself the opportunity to like believe that I could be a model like I said like I'm like five six five seven like I can't be a model that's not a bad height for a model yeah I know that now but like (laughs) it's just like watching like america's next top model oh yeah they like six six two yeah, yeah. So, like okay so like no i can't be a model because i'm like not that height but as i did my research i learned about commercial modeling which is just like campaigns and things like that and so i started going on websites like backstage um where you can uh like put make a profile for yourself and post your pictures there and uh start applying for different roles and if they like you they like you they ask for a casting video and yeah you do that whole thing so i did that um when Cairo was about i want to say nine months wow. uh, 
director reached out to us. He's like, oh, like, um, I found you guys on backstage. Like, do you guys want to do this campaign with us? Um, it was for this, like, uh, sleep sock heart monitor thing. Wow. Yeah, so uh, we did that together. Uh, that was our first, like, shooting experience. So that just, like put me into the mindset of like, oh, wait, like, I can do this, like, right. <laughs> which was really cool. Like, so I just started applying to more and more castings and like getting things. Um, so following that, we got a, a campaign with this swimwear line called Maloko Swim. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful line. Love that shoe so much. Um, that was our real, our first real photo shoot, uh, because prior to that, it was a commercial. Um, so we got to do that together and then this is a long story sorry <laughs> no hey I, I asked for the details i told i've been stalking so i can have these questions so i can know everything <laughs> so at at that shoot there was a uh casting director there so she was just like oh my gosh you guys are so cute together like have you ever heard of expecting models wow uh, like, oh, like, I've heard of them. And I definitely saw them when I was pregnant with Cairo. But I was like, I can't be a model. I'm not tall enough. Right. <laughs> but um, she's like, no, I think you guys would be great. I was like, okay, like, I'll apply tonight. So I applied that night. And she didn't even know I was pregnant at the time. Like, I wow. was pregnant. Um, she was just talking about, like, me and Cairo just as a um, mom and baby duo. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I guess this is like perfect if it works out because I'm pregnant anyway. So I applied that night and then three days later, they got back to me with my contract and I wow. said, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> and it's beautiful in the sense that you can make, it's one of those things where you said, you know, in, in, intuitively, you're just like, oh, I can't do it. But then immediately this opportunity, as you said, happy surprise, yeah. drops in and launches you right on a new pathway and where you can not only connect with your sons but you know also i feel like change the narrative around pregnancy and 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 motherhood in itself right because i said earlier a lot of people unfortunately have the expectation that once you're a mother your goods are gone or you're fading away or your old news essentially where no this is a new exciting chapter in your life where you're raising new people you're in going through new endeavors both with your partner with yourself and with your with your children and you're doing it in you know the the, the brightest way possible right so and as i know you as i can see as you're already instilling in, in both your boys at the age of two is the is, is the ethic of hard work essentially right like you started out as an eva ballerina then switched to kelly g I mean, right, just the Kelly G part of your name, Neva Kelly G. But in doing so, you went from dancing to founding your own record label to um, blogging to modeling and real estate and, and mommy blogging, things of that nature. So, like, how do you, what sort of about your character do you think makes it possible for you, like, to pivot so much, essentially? Yeah. Um, okay, so there's this... Uh quote that I saw on Instagram, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people have also seen it. <laughs> it basically says, um, like, I'm not afraid to change. This is like my third life. Right. <laughs> so like, I definitely, like, resonate with that. Because I, you know, I don't deny an opportunity. So if something comes forward, and it really interests me, I go for it. Just because like, why not? Like, exactly knows where this can bring me who knows who I can network with that like will pivot me into something else and just like why not I can you can be anyone like and I definitely want my sons to also feel that way I want them to live that way of just like you don't have to be any specific any specific way like right um, so yeah, you know, that's just something I live by and something that's pivoted me from Neva Ballerina when I was, like, in high school. I, was, I went to a performing arts high school, so uh, that's where that came from. And then I, I was a dance major. And then uh, Neva... Did you go to LaGuardia? No, my mom went to LaGuardia. She went to LaGuardia. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I went to Urban Assembly for... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I know, yes, yes, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I went there... 
um, graduated from there and everything like that, went to college and I wasn't in the dance space as much anymore. So it, that was just like a reinvention of myself. Like I thought I was going to be a child psychologist and I was wow. like gung ho on that. And look at me now, I'm a mom. <laughs> I'm a mom, I'm a model, you know, I'm a vlogger. It's just, you you never know how things can change for you. I, I don't, I don't have any real expectations for my career except to elevate. So, you know, you, you just have to see. <laughs> right. So actually in terms of like what we're looking to see, like going away from, I think, I know we talked about all the hard work, right? But I know there's also times where you just need to say, Right, you you need to get your good book, your your mommy juice and some candles and everybody just get out, right? So in what ways do you sort of center yourself to amidst all the, the photo shoots and the nine to fives and dinner dates and socialization, all that stuff? Definitely. Um I, honestly I don't get a lot of time to just like woosa. Right. <laughs> um my life is very, very busy. So um you know, when the boys sleep, uh, I get a little bit of time to my... a little bit of nap. I love TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I scroll for, like, hours, like, hours into my sleep time to right. do that whole thing. But um, I also really love cooking. So, like, when I, when I get to go in the kitchen and, like, make all these elaborate meals, right. that's for me like i can like put the gate in front of the kitchen and say like babe watch the kids right. <laughs> and just like be by myself and be as creative as i want to be like in the kitchen which like really centers me and i feel like i've also seen as well like the 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 the, the baby food concoctions that you're making essentially yeah. with like you're experimenting oh do they like this they don't like this as much they don't like this it's it's, it's fun essentially finding your own fun in and taking care of someone else, but still sort of taking care of yourself as well. So I think that explains it best. Towards the end of the year though, right? What are we looking forward to? Uh, that's a good question. Um, well, on a smaller scale, one of my favorite family things to do is our holiday card. Oh yes, I saw the holiday cards. Yes, they were fire. <laughs> I love our holiday cards. <laughs> so I'm definitely looking forward to Christmas time so that um, I can come up with a new like color scheme and concept for it all and shoot with one of my favorite photographers, Ro Visions. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, he's done our, our Christmas photos two Christmases in a row and like we just plan on keeping that whole thing going. Um, so that's on a, like a family aspect of things on a career wise thing. Um, at the end of the year, I get my like end of the year bonus and thank you time. So I'm definitely looking forward to renegotiating my salary. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, just up in it and up in it. Yeah, I wish I could have like a gif to like today's price is not today. Not exactly exactly so i'm definitely looking forward to that okay and honestly i feel like the christmas cards with any new i love the christmas cards with new fans i'm not gonna lie i be on instagram like like i said not my time yet but i love watching it i love watching the christmas card that's definitely something i'm gonna look forward to when yeah. i'm having my own little juniors <laughs> all right so if you see my interviews right you know let's do a little lightning round so i can i can nitpick your brain a little bit as more than what i did already all right, so the first one, we got to start off with a funny story that you've had since becoming a mom. Oh, God. So this one is funny, but also really disgusting. <laughs> uh, I already know how it gets. All right. Yeah, this is just motherhood. Uh, <laughs> so there was one night where um, my partner's cousin, Hannah, was staying over because um, she was watching our son the next morning, which is great. It's so sweet of her. Um, so Cairo, <laughs> Cairo, I think he was sleeping in his crib that night, but like early in the morning, he started whining. So we put him in between my partner and I. So we woke up. Okay, cool, whatever. We just feel like Cairo's little hands, like on our face or whatever, like so nice, so cute, whatever. <laughs> so, um, you know, like I'm, my eyes are like halfway open. I'm just like, okay, Cairo, like enough, like lay down, lay down. Right. 
but like I smell something, but I'm like, oh. I need to change his diaper. So, so whenever I start waking up a little bit more, I'm looking at my partner. I'm like, what is that brown stuff on you? <laughs> I take out the cover, <laughs> and Carol has exploded through his diaper between us on our bed, on us. He's wiping it on our faces now, <laughs> and we woke up like that. And Yo! yeah, Hannah's in Hannah's in our um in our living room, and we're like, uh, hey Hannah, we have to go down to the laundry mat real quick. Um, oh my god! Yeah, I was like, yeah, you gotta. Take him, take him away now, now, please. The bath. <laughs> we have to go handle ourselves really quickly. Oh my That's god! Disgusting, but like later looking at it, funny stories. That oh yeah, of course, because he's waking up, not having no care in the world. Like, all right, mommy, daddy, wake up now, please. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> let's let's get to something a little less, a less um uh, disturbing to my appetite. What's your favorite modeling gig? Uh, okay, so I, I, it's between two. Like, my all-time favorite was definitely uh, with my local swim because I got to work with Cairo, and that was just, like, a really beautiful shoot to have. But my second was definitely with Gap because, like, oh, my God, Gap. They yeah, exactly, yeah. Flew me out to San Francisco. Like, they paid for my flight, my hotel. Wow transportation it was just like celebrity treatment so Get the mommy's paid yes definitely top two <laughs> so do you prefer making tiktoks now that you got your little tiktok addiction or are you still staying true to your one true love youtube that's another hard one because i feel like with youtube i, I can be candid i can, it's more right. in, tell you what i'm thinking tiktok is like it's just funny or relatable. <laughs> so, like, that's fun. But, like, I don't know. It, it's it's hard to pick one. <laughs> I would say, me personally, I love the YouTube. Because I can sit there and I can, like, it's like we're on FaceTime. You know, <laughs> like, it's like I'm on mute and you're just telling me, like, yeah, this is great tea. I'm not going to lie. This is amazing. <laughs> so, granted, like I said, I'm a dude, right? But I, I do my fair share of research, right? And I understand that when you're pregnant, you start to eat a little crazy foods, right? So what's the weirdest pregnancy craving you've ever had? Ice. Ice, ice, ice. Really? I am so embarrassed to say this, but for each pregnancy, I have cracked a tooth on ice. Horrible, horrible, horrible. So, uh, ladies, if you're thinking of getting pregnant... <laughs> ice... Is Birth control for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right. To end it off, right, what are three lessons that you've learned on your journey of being a mother, a model, nine to five worker, uh, partner to your partner, and just an individual all around? Uh, my first one would definitely be just, like, maximum effort. Um, do as much as you possibly can um because that'll only take you further second is to breathe because you know like being that you're at maximum effort all the time like you also have to center yourself um right and my third would be this is gonna sound a little bad but like expect the worst <laughs> because it's only up from there um if you're expecting the worst and you get that you get the best of it then right. that's great um right. if not what you would hope for you know whatever on to the next <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. and i feel like you have a very like you have a very um well you're an aries so it's a very <laughs> fire sign fire <laughs> sign personality so good <laughs> i want every I told you i want everything i want everything this is what i do <laughs> but anyway yeah. I would say, yeah, you have a very, like, let's, like, um, what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? Carpe diem personality, where he sort of sees the day, right? Put a 400% into every single second of the day. Breathe, because when that sprint happens, you need to pace yourself, but also realize that you can trip and fall, but it's all right, because a little scraping hurt nobody. Exactly. exactly. Right. So, thank you. 
Aniva <laughs> Kelly J Kelly G for an amazing, amazing interview. Our twentieth interview, I feel like, is amazing. A week before Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to you as well. Uh, wish the best to you, your family, your new family, growing family, family, your legacy. And honestly, thank you for everybody that came onto the live. You guys can watch this on the DC Voice now, later, whenever you want to, with your mom, your grandma, your uncle, your auntie, and. Aniva, any last words to sign us off? Just thank you so much for having me. This is definitely so much fun for me. My first like IG live interview and your questions were amazing. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being such an amazing guest. I'm going to see you guys next Sunday. Bye. -bye. <laughs>